Hey, math students, how you doing? Let's talk about sequences. So, what's a sequence? It's pretty easy. It's just a string of objects in a particular order. I say objects. It's going to be numbers, okay? But it could be, you know, it could be any, anything. But, um, so for our purposes, it's going to be a string of numbers that go in a particular order. So there's the first one, the second one, the third one. And when I say the first one, that's called a term. The first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, like that. So, uh, and generally what we do is we write it like a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, like that, where we use a subscript. Okay? Pretty easy so far. And uh, sequences can be finite, that is to say, they have a last term, or they can be infinite, where you just say dot 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 forever. Um, <clears throat> now, sequences can be defined explicitly, or they can be defined recursively, and that's the that's the main distinction that I want to make for you today, is the difference between uh, an explicit uh, formula for a sequence and a recursive formula for a sequence. So let me just give you one for example. Let's say we have the sequence 8, 13, 18, 23, etc. Okay? So we're looking at that. Ooh, can I? I think I might need to bring this down a little bit. 8, 13, 18, 23, etc. I think that looks better. And so you might be looking at this and uh, you might say to yourself, okay, well, I see what's happening here. Each time we're just adding five, okay? Well, each time we're adding five, that's a recursive definition. And this is the way we'd write it. We'd say, okay, a1 equals eight. So our first term is eight. And a sub n is gonna equal a sub n minus one plus five for n greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so what's it saying? It's saying we're going to start with 8 and then to define uh, some term we're going to say look at the prior term add 5 to it and the n greater than or equal to 2 says that's that's the rule we're going to use for the second and on term. Okay? So that's a recursive re recursive definition of that sequence. We could also just write it out explicitly though. We could say, well, okay, so uh, if I think of if I think of my domain as being one, two, three, four, then I can think of this sequence as being a function. And I know what happens when we just step up like that. That's a linear function. And so this would be uh, a sub n equals, uh, well, when n is 1, uh, a sub n is, so a sub 1 is 8, a sub 2 is 13. So this is going to be uh, 3 plus 5 times n. Okay? Or 5n plus 3, either way you want to write it. Now, I said this is like a function where the domain is the natural numbers. Well, that's not exactly true is a function where the domain is the natural numbers. That's really what a sequence is, is it's just a function. Um, but it's not a function, it's not a continuous function. Like I said, the domain is all the natural numbers, the positive integers. So either we could describe it like this, or we could describe it like this. Either way is perfectly acceptable. Let me give you another one. Let's look at, uh, uh, let's see, let's look at, one twenty fourth and one sixth and two thirds and eight thirds, etc. Okay, so again, you may look at this and you may say, Who, what's going on here? Well, from here to here, it got uh, multiplied by four, and from here to here, it got multiplied by four. And actually, if I think carefully, 4 times 1 6 is 4 6, which is 2 thirds. So yeah, each time we're just multiplying by 4. So I'm going to define this as a sub 1 is 1 24th, 
and a sub n is going to be four times whatever the prior term was, a sub n minus 1, for all n greater than or equal to 2. That's our recursive definition of this uh, sequence. We could also write this explicitly, because you could say to yourself, well, if we're starting with 1 24th, and we're just going to multiply times 4 each time, that's pretty much what an exponential function does, right? So this could be a sub n equals, and I'd call this 1 24th times 4 to the, so 4 to the 0 would be 1, and 4 to the 1 would be 2, so I'm going to say 4 to the n minus 1. That's how I would define that explicitly. Or I guess I could also call it 1 over 96 times 4 to the n. That would also work perfectly fine. Okay? So either like this or like this, your choice. Both of them work. Let's look at another one. This time we're going to have 4, 5, 7, 11, 19. Huh. So what's going on here? Hmm. Well, what I always do is I always look at the differences. So let's see. From 4 to 5, it's going up by 1. From 5 to 7, it's going up by 2. From 7 to 11, it's going up by 4. From 11 to 19, it's going up by 8. Okay, so that tells me that the differences are always being doubled each time. And if I look a little more carefully, I can tell, okay, what if I doubled this? I'd get 10, which is 3 more than 7. If I double this, I get 14, which is 3 more than 11. I think I'm onto something. If I double this, I get 22, which is 3 more than 19. So I'm going to say a sub 1 is 4, and a sub n is... 2 times 4 minus 3, so 2 times a uh, sub n minus 1 minus 3 for n greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so let's see if this is actually working. So I'm going to double 4, I get 3, I subtract, sorry, I double 4, I get 8, I subtract 3, I get 5. Double 5, I get 10, subtract 3, I get 7. Double the 7, I get 14. Subtract 3, I get 11. Double the 11, I get 22. Subtract 3, I get 19. Yeah, that works. And how would I express this explicitly? Hmm. Expressing this one explicitly, uh, this would be a sub n is... And I know it's going to have to do something with an exponential... Uh, what's this going to be? This is going to be, I'm going to cheat and look at what I got. This is going to be 2 to the n minus 1 plus 3. Okay? When n is 1, and I, I did cheat. This was, not, this was not obvious what we should do here. And we'll get to exactly how one goes from recursive to explicit and explicit to recursive. And actually, there's no one rule. There's different types of sequences uh, that you can define recursively and explicitly. Uh, and so there's no, like I said, there's no one rule of how you go from one to the other one. Um, but let's see. So uh, 2 to the 0 is 1 plus 3 is 4. 2 to the 1 is 2 plus 3 is 5. 2 to the 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. 2 to the 2 is, 2 to the 3 is 8, uh, plus 3 is 11. And 2 to the 4 is 16, plus 3 is 19. So, yep, that works as well. So, either this or this are perfectly fine ways of describing this sequence. Let's do another one. Let's do, uh, whoa. Oh, this is a good one. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen. Okay. Now you may be looking at this and going, what? Or you may be looking at this and going, oh, I know what that is. That's a Fibonacci sequence. Uh, well, to the second group, I say, you're right. To the first group, I say, 
This is a Fibonacci sequence. How do you define a Fibonacci sequence? Well, you define it recursively. On this one, defining it explicitly is going to be really hard to do. So let's define it recursively instead. And this is going to be a sub 1 is 1, a sub 2 is 1, and a sub n is a sub n minus 2 plus a sub n minus 1. Okay? So this time what we're doing is we're not just looking at the term that comes before it. We're looking at the two terms that come before it. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. 8 plus 13 is 21, and so on and so on and so on. Okay? It's called the Fibonacci sequence because it was... Uh, it, it, the, the credit for it is given to... Uh, Leonardo of Pisa, who was known as Fibonacci, um, it's not the best thing he did. The best thing he did was take Arabic numerals from Tunisia and bring them up into Europe so people could stop using those cursed Roman numerals and start using a numerical system that actually made sense. But anyway, this is also really cool. Uh, so now let's get to the next one. Uh, oh, and you'll notice I didn't even try to write an explicit uh, form for that. Yeah, I'm not going to. Uh, so let's do 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. So you may be looking at these and you may be saying, well, shoot, that's easy. That's just uh, perfect squares. So a sub n is n squared. Right you are. That's exactly right. It can also be defined recursively, although you got to get a got to give it a little thought. You have to say uh, a sub let's see a sub one is going to be one, and a sub n is going to be the prior term plus two times the square root of the prior term plus one. And if you're looking at that and thinking, looks a little bit like a. Uh, um, a perfect square. It looks a little bit like uh, the square root of a sub n minus 1 plus 1 squared. Well, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Okay? So what we do is, let's say if n is, uh, is 3, we look at the prior term, 4. We add 2 times the square root of the prior term, so that's going to be 2 times 2, which is also 4. So 4 plus 4 is 8. You add 1, you get 9. Okay? 9 uh, plus 2 times the square root of 9 is going to be 9 plus 2 times 3, which is 9 plus 6, which is 15, plus 1 is 16, and that gets you the next one. So, a little cumbersome. This is way more easy, more uh, uh, quickly defined, but uh, it still works. You can still do it. Okay, I'm going to give you one more, and then we're done. Last one we're going to look at is... 1, 1, 2, 6, 24, 1, 20, 7, 20, etc. Okay. Again, you look at this and you say, oh, sure. A sub n is n factorial. That was easy. You're right. That is pretty easy. However, if uh, you don't have that, you could define this recursively and you could say, well, let me say that a sub 1 is 1, and a sub... Actually, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. This is n minus 1 factorial. Now, that, that's, that's better. Okay? Because remember, this uh, n is 1 here. So n minus 1 would be 0 factorial. Uh, 2 minus 1 would be 1 factorial. 3 minus 1, that's 2 factorial. So now it's, now it's working. Okay, so we're going to say a sub 1 is 1. A sub 2 is also 1, and A sub n is going to be... <coughs> now remember, uh, a factorial... Uh, I'm going to take this and multiply it by 3 to get 6. I'm going to take this and multiply it by 4 to get 24. So I'm going to take the prior term, and I'm going to multiply it by... Now, how do I get that... Uh, how do we get, how do I get that n? Well, I'll just say it's a sub n minus 1 over a sub n minus 2 plus 1. That'll work. So that'll get me, uh, uh, again, not the simplest thing in the world. This is way easier to look at and evaluate than this is. However, 
If you have a particular term and you want to know what's the next term in the sequence, recursive is the way to go. Okay? So, hope you know what a sequence is now. Okay? It's just a string of numbers that go in a particular order. You can have finite sequences. You can have infinite sequences. Sequences can be defined explicitly. They can be defined recursively. Uh, not all sequences really lend themselves to both explicit or recursive. Some lend themselves much more to one type than to the other. Okay? All right. See you next video. Bye-bye.